Hi everyone. Greetings, magnificent souls to the Attract Health, Build Wealth podcast, where we have open and honest discussions about ourselves. This is a place where we break down, break away, and break through codependency, allowing ourselves to attract health, build wealth, and live a peaceful life. We are tired of being sick and tired. We are tired, but we are not giving up. We know that there is something magnificent inside of us. And because we are fighting daily, hourly, and by the minute, we are fighting ourselves, our kids, our spouses. We have to do things differently. We have to break the cycle. We don't have a million chances. We have to be happy now. We have to find a way. So how do we do that? How is that possible? If you look around at what society is telling you, they tell you that what we're doing is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through the practice and the love that we call awakening that the magnificent soul. We are magnificent souls, and these are our stories of healing. Today in episode seven, I'll be going over and discussing a phenomenon that showed up many times in my relationships, not only with my partner, interestingly, but on sometimes both sides of that relationship. And even in professional situations, living situations, really anywhere where I've had to have close contact with someone. And that's the feeling and the phenomenon of walking on eggshells, which in my experience can be emotionally debilitating and can act as fuel for anxiety and stress and paranoia. And before I get into the discussion, don't forget to let me know your thoughts about this episode, any feedback you have, or anything you'd like me to cover on future podcasts at epiphanyvault.com. And remember, you can share anonymously. It's a safe place, and I would, of course, welcome the discussion and the feedback. So walking on eggshells. It seems like it's an American colloquialism, like I'm not sure what they call it in different countries, but it's very relevant to the, the discussion of codependency. And in my relationships with my partner and in my relationships, even with my father, or really, like I said, anything giving me tension, like a roommate situation, it's played out as an extreme and acute psychological state in which I felt as if I had to be very, very careful to not upset someone or to make someone angry. You know, I've gone, you know, as far as walking on eggshells, some of the actions that I've done is I've like taken alternate routes uh, throughout in the office or throughout the home just so I didn't come in contact with that person. Uh, I would do anything really to avoid, quote unquote, setting someone off or triggering anger directed towards me or life or just anger in general, just kind of being a punching bag. And it seemed as if little things would or could set him off or them off. And his reactions really didn't make a lot of sense. It didn't line up with the situation as the way that I was perceiving it. And I noticed myself taking on the responsibility of his mood and projecting it onto myself. For example, if I was failing at keeping him, and I'm just going to say him here, but the person that we're referring to could be any situation. It could be a her. It could be a work platonic um, roommate situation, but I was failing at keeping him happy. So that means that I wasn't happy because I was failing. Therefore, my actions were thwarted and were convoluted based on the feeling of someone else. And in turn, that made me feel less and less self-confident because there was really nothing I could do besides tiptoe around and diminish my voice and tiptoeing was walking on eggshells, right? And being very cognizant about your actions, your voice, your opinion, how, how it's going to make this other person react. And in my case, instead of communicating the stress that this, this type of interaction was causing, I would avoid confrontation at all costs because I wasn't sure how the conversation would end up. If I was going to be heard, or if I even had the courage and self-esteem to stand up and explain myself clearly. And I remember being in a constant state of anxiety that either I had done something wrong or that I was going to do something wrong in the future. And it was really hard for me to just chill. It was hard for me just to chill out 
when I was around a stronger codependent personality. And I always felt like it was my responsibility for his mood. If he was happy, then I was happy and I was doing a good job. If he was unhappy, I would try anything to make him happy. And if it didn't work, then I was the failure. But the constant pressure to be on my toes was seriously harmful to me because I was masking all of my true wants and desires, thoughts and feelings and placing a priority of his wants, desires, thoughts and feelings before mine, which is, a, a you know, a very, as we talked about before, a very strong characteristic of codependency. So if any of these ring true in your life, you're not alone. And I was thinking, like, why is walking on eggshells specifically, why is it a codependent characteristic in relationships? In all of these examples, some could argue that that's just a relationship. There's going to be tension. True, obviously. But as we've talked about before, codependency is a state of extremes, extreme fear, extreme shame. And typically in a codependent relationship, um, the dynamic is that one person is going to be the more controlling and dominant personality, while the other tends to be more timid and submissive. And walking on eggshells happens because of the erratic behavior of the dominant codependent. The louder person can get angry easier. They seem to get mad at mundane things. Sometimes even the louder personality will call the other person names and be verbally abusive, in some cases physically abusive, emotionally, sexually abusive. And as time goes by, as they continue to be in this codependent relationship, the other timid personality learns that those, there's no real way to determine the mood of the other. And the codependency really shines through because the timid personality is a true people pleaser. And he or she really relies and tries to own the mood of the other, meaning it is my responsibility to make my husband happy. I know if you're a woman, you've heard this before, and it's been, this is a big societal issue in my opinion as well, but I've thought it, thought it, and I wonder if you have thought about that too. And it's so, you know, in thinking about it and being mindful of the situation, it's so obvious how the anticipation of how my actions would either succeed or fail in the aim to alter the other's personality. And after a while, a deep fear of taking any action at all because you're not quite sure what's going to happen leads to quote unquote walking on eggshells. And one step further down the codependency dysfunction is for me, at least I would have very deep shame for acting like that, for knowing that I was doing, but what I was doing and what I was feeling was wrong, but it was kind of like, it was kind of a, you know, instinctive reaction is to really make sure this person is pleased, if that makes sense. So I knew what, what, I, what I was doing was wrong, but for me, I was failing to succeed in that aim. So what can we do about it? Most of you know that one of the reasons that I'm doing this podcast is my desire to tell my story um, because I did hit a very, very low point in my progression. And if I can just help one person, or if I can ring a bell for one person, that payoff is really priceless to me. But if this is something that you see in your life, uh, what can we do to advance past these behaviors? And I first, I think the first thing to think about really, and really own is the realization that this constant beratement and bombardment of your being, being projected onto you by somebody else has really taken you down to a low, deep place, maybe even a place of self-hatred. Maybe it's uh, manifesting itself in other addictions, drug addictions, alcohol addictions, um, food addictions, which was, you know, what happened with me. But you have to own that the something in there is something wrong here. And a lot of it has to do with you and how you feel about yourself. What I would not recommend is placing the blame on the other person, right? Um, I, you know, I went through years and years and years of just trying to reason with my partner about the treatment of me and how I felt and really ha hoping that he would own some of this dysfunction and anxiety that I was feeling. But in the end, really, that was never going to happen. And unless it was his on his terms. So I have to be responsible for what, what I am responsible for. And that's me. 
And again, that lends, you know, if you kind of place the blame on the other person, it's lends so much energy and so much validity in some ways to the way that they're acting, right? And that's why they call it codependency is because it's a cycle. You know, we're here to break the cycle and that that all that energy is what we're trying to detach from in that codependent scenario. And after recognizing this, now we can begin to work on ourselves. And if you're wondering what I do to keep up on my soul maintenance, and this is a daily, sometimes hourly minute, you know, thing, check out episode six as I kind of go over what my soul maintenance plan is and what my suggestion would be to get you started on that. But it's a constant work in process. You know, nobody's perfect. No one has positive feelings all the time. And we, ha we have to learn how to live with negative feelings and be okay with ourselves. And um, you should always be the first thing on your list, always, even if you have kids. You know how they say on the airplane, put the oxygen mask on you first so you can take care of your children and your, your dependents? Same way here. It's just a little bit harder to recognize that you need to prioritize that in life. So my question for you, magnificent souls out there, is what is your soul maintenance? How are you building up your soul reserve and therefore your self-love and self-worth? Let me know at epiphanyvault.com. And I hope this has been helpful today. And I'll see you next time. Living and loving.